the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. Hoping the wind will blow a few more in tonight. Yeah. Um, but uh, speaking of wind, <laughs> so I don't know. Well, there's someone new. The wind just blew you right in. <laughs> See? <laughs> I'm so prophetic. I didn't even know. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I don't know if anybody else feels it, but I feel like we're in another shift. And as I was thinking about what is this shift, right? What, what's going on? And, and I feel like the river's been established. The Lord has poured it out and it's here and it's established. And I feel like now we're entering into the season of the wind of the Holy Spirit. And the wind, in my mind, comes just before the fire, which is what we all pray for. That's the revival. That's the outpouring. That's the the manifestation that we're all, I think, longing to see. And so as we're, and I was thinking about, um, you know, where the river explodes and where the wind comes, there's usually a big mess. We call those natural disasters on earth, but in the Holy Spirit, they're beautiful, but they're still messy. And it's so funny because I just Googled scriptures about wind, and this isn't what I was expecting to talk about tonight, but I think it's exactly what I'm supposed to talk about. Um, Ephesians chapter 4 uh, I'm going to start um, uh, Ephesians ch chapter 4, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And he had just gone through all the different gifts and the different offices. Till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And there's another version, that, um, the um, ESV version, I don't even know what that stands for, um, says, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. And I thought, you know, as we're entering these seasons of the Holy Spirit, it's also a test, right? It's also a test. When the waves come, when the Holy Spirit comes in like a rushing uh, river, what's our reaction to it? Things get messy. Things get stirred up. Things get a little goofy. Um, the enemy is going to come in with his standard to try and stop it, right? To try and discourage us, to try and distract us, to try and get us to not press in to what God has. So when the waves come, are we going to be tossed to and fro? And when the wind comes, because I'm telling you, the wind is coming. The wind is coming right now. The wind of the Holy Spirit is going to come. And he's going to stir up these whirlwinds. And these whirlwinds, if we're not seeing them as he sees them, are going to look like tornadoes of destruction. But they're not. And the very next scripture is Mark chapter 4, verse 39. Jesus was on a boat in the middle of a storm. And what did he say? And he awoke and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the winds cease, and there was a great calm. So when these storms come, when we speak peace, then everything that's not from the Lord has to stop. And everything that is the Lord continues. And so I guess that as the seasons continue, as these shifts change, I really believe this every single month. The Lord said every month this year, there's going to be a new level, a new revelation, a new step forward into the fullness that was just talked about in Ephesians chapter 4. So I encourage you. It's going to take all of us, the perfecting of the saints. It doesn't say the saint. It doesn't say you. It says it's going to take the perfecting of all of the saints together for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is composed of everybody, of all of those offices, of all those gifts, of all those callings. And that's why I'm so excited about our women's conference. This is an opportunity for people to step out and all the women of this church to step out, even for two minutes, to step out in their gifts and their callings and to take a leap of faith. To take that step forward and just trust that the Lord is going to be there. And I'm so excited that Sally's going to close our... It can only be two minutes. <laughs> it can be 30 seconds. But you know what? You volunteered to do something that you have never volunteered to do before. And that is so exciting to me. That is wonderful. And Sally, I told you, I gave you guys a word. And I said that you two are children of promise. You're Abraham and Sarah. And that his promises are going to be birthed by you. So you have to step forward. All of us are together in this. Michael and I have our purpose, and we have to step forward together. All of us have to, Sarah and Eric, you guys have to step forward together. Jamie and Peter step forward together. <laughs> it takes all of us. Yeah. And our marriages, you and your wife, Diane, all of our marriages are examples of the perfect unity 
of the marriage and of us with Christ. And so there's a blessing that comes when we step forward together and when we operate and we, we use our gifts together for, for a combined purpose. That even exponentially reveals Christ Amen. and the, the whole of the body of Christ. And so when the winds come and when the, ra- <laughs> when the waves are crashing, peace be still. We are children of God. Jesus, this was before he died and rose again. This is before he was, you know, ascended and we were filled with the Holy Spirit. There was another wind that came at Pentecost and it, and it brought chaos. People thought they were wasted yeah. at noonday. They're like, oh my God, these people are wasted. No, they weren't wasted. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and that wind brought with it fire. And I'm telling you that the Lord wants to know, what are we going to say? to these storms? What are we going to say to the whirlwinds that come? What are we going to say that the waves that try and come crashing around us? Are we going to say, oh my gosh, the wave is so big. Jesus, we're going to die. Wake up. We're going to die. There's, we're, there's a storm all around. We're going to die. Or are we going to say, I'm going to go take a nap. Peace be still. Yeah, amen. I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just saying, let's yeah. just stop being tossed to and fro. Are we children or are we adults? Are we mature Christians? It's time for us to bring forth our fullness. And I'm talking to myself, too. I felt a calling like never before to stir these things up. The Lord wants to pour out revelation, but if we're not willing to dig for it, I was teasing Sarah, I call it digging for gold. If we're not willing to dig for the gold, we're not going to find the treasure. If we're not in there looking for new places to go to expand our tents, we're not going to find the pearl in the field. We have to be seeking. We have to be searching. So I encourage you guys, be hungry. Be hungry for more. Because the Lord just wants to pour it out. He's just saying, who's going to ask? Who's going to come to me and want more? Who's going to come to me and want new revelation? Because I really believe, you guys, I believe that there's going to be so much new revelation poured out at this conference for the ladies. And that's just going to bless the whole body, the whole body of Christ. So, anyway, be encouraged in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies tonight? Yes, Peter.
you this to proclaim that I believe I'm going to get the full amount, and it's going to come. It, it won't come, obviously, Friday when everybody else is getting paid their bonuses, but it's going to come, I believe. And so when that happens, I'll let you know. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else uh, prayer request or testimony this morning? Yeah, Mike. When they're getting better each day, just keep lifting her up and, and watching over her. Um, just believing in total healing. She's uh, sleeping better. Uh, we had some issues with the uh, IV pump and stuff. And we uh, got that resolved. Just little things trying to nip at you. And um, she's doing better each day. Hopefully in the next couple of Wednesdays she'll be able to start coming on Wednesdays again. Um, I saw that Lou Engel uh, from the call declared an Esther fan. Mm -hmm. um, to uh, intercede for this uh, witch hunt against uh, our president. And uh, it's kind of strange that she started with the youth talking about uh, Esther here a couple weeks ago. And uh, we're entering into a time of serum, and uh, it's all lining into um, the House of Prayer Friday night and on the uh, prayer burn on Saturday. Everything's knitting together really cool. So I'm praying just for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and strength as we go through this. It's almost like a tunnel, um, but it's not. It's just like a Holy Ghost injection system going on there. And, and we're going to fly through this stuff, and I, I want to make sure that we all grab every tidbit of what the Lord wants to uh, wants to do. Amen. 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 The Women of Influence is after Esther. That's what I named the conference after. The women's go. ministry is after Esther, daughter of King. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Last Sunday night, uh, just before we went to bed, we were going to go going through all the prayer <coughs> and all that. And I usually just go to all the you know a few minutes to when I see like something I want to pray about. And I remember over the years, if I'm not speaking. such a way that doesn't fit my vocabulary. It, it's precise. It, uh, it's not confusing in any sense. And uh, but it went on and on and on and on and on that whole night. And the more I heard, the more I'm sure I remember stand and go to the Lord tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We come together tonight to gather in one mind and one accord, Lord, to seek after you, Lord, to gather together to be in your presence, Lord, to worship, to lift you up, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you that when we come before you, Lord, when we bring these needs, Lord, Thank you that your promises are yes and amen. Yes, Lord.
thank you for the blessings, Lord, that are coming even now, Lord. That you have made the way, Lord. You know the end from the beginning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord that you're drawing people from the north and the south and the east and the west, Lord, the hungry hearts who are learning, who are, who are seeking, who are seeking, Lord, who are lost. Bring them in from the north and the south and the east and the west, Lord. Continue, Lord. Continue your work in this house, in this body, a safe house, a house of prayer, Lord. As we prepare our hearts tonight to worship you, Lord, to lift you up and magnify you, Lord. As we prepare to listen to your word tonight, Lord, the fresh revelation from heaven, Lord, to renew our minds, Lord, to increase our faith, Lord. The faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. We thank you for every person here tonight, Lord. We pray for those who couldn't be here tonight, Lord. Those who may be watching or listening. Let them be blessed with your presence tonight, Lord. And I just ask, Lord, that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear in this season. Where the winds are blowing and the waves are raging, Lord. Let us see your purposes, Lord, your intent. Let us see with your eyes and hear with your ears. Holy Spirit, come and give us wisdom and revelation as never before. As you stir the hunger in the hearts of your people, hunger for meat, the meat of the word to be shared and fed to those who need sustenance, Lord, who are weak from the milk, the lack of substance, of the power of the dunamis word, Lord. Let your word come forth in power. Let your word come forth and transform and strengthen the body of Christ to rise up in this hour, to take authority over the principalities and powers of darkness, Lord, who have ruled and reigned for too long. Raise up your body, Lord. Raise up your church to take her place, Lord, to take a stand, to look at the storm and say, peace be still, to rest in your finished work and know who we are in you, Lord. Come, have your way tonight, Lord, in this service. And we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, if you brought a cell phone with you tonight, just a reminder to turn the ringer, uh, turn the ringer up or go ahead and turn the phone up. And this Friday, whew, I'm telling you guys, there is so many, like the prophetic words, the volume of prophetic words that are coming out of the body of Christ right now are ridiculous. I don't know if you're on the Elijah list, but it is literally tens per day. And it used to be, I'd say, tens per week. It is email, I, my email box is just clogged. And there is a voice. The Lord is speaking to his people. All we have to do is hear. And I'm telling you, there is something happening during this Purim season. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, take it away, Friday night. Friday night, well... As I posted on, on Facebook, I know some of the spirit and stuff like that, and the Lord wanted me to glean um, songs from these nights. Uh, we've been doing it for, what, four years now? Mm -hmm. uh, I just went over the last four DVDs previous on that, and there's new songs being birthed in, in those mm -hmm. nights, new songs that are not written. And uh, uh, I made a, the Lord gave me a statement, so if, the, if your spirit is not satisfied with all the songs that you all the worship songs of your nose, you need to seek me because I got stuff that hasn't even been thought about in man's head. Yeah. So I started reviewing the things that the Lord was releasing, and there's four, four plus brand new songs off of the last four times we've come together. They're still being edited, but there's new sounds, and there's new, uh, just new sounds and all kinds of new melodies and stuff that that, that has been getting birth here. Okay, it's time. Raging River, you've heard that a few times. That was birth here. That was a Friday night uh, God thing. So that was one of several that are in, in motion. It's not bragging about me or us, the worship team and stuff. It's just God is releasing. Yeah. And if you have an ear, let him hear. Okay, so um, come, listen to things being birthed. I mean, it's almost like a, uh, what, what do they call it, the, the, in, in, the, in the hospital where the babies are born. Baby boom. <laughs> no, the, 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 the farm where the babies are born. Oh, um, oh. Come on. Huh? No, it's uh, <laughs> pediatric. Maternity. Oh, maternity. Maternity, it's a maternity ward. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, things are being birthed in here. Woo. It's just music. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yes. yes. When we worship, there'll be prayer, we'll take communion together, and we yes. always pray together as a group. Amen. And this continues on. Yes. Uh, up at uh, Heartland Church up in Ankeny. Uh, we'll start at 9 o'clock in the morning, continue all the way through to our own worship. So that's different teams do the drum circle or the worship teams mm -hmm. like ours, coming in from different parts of the state, stop seeking after God, standing in the gap for uh, our government, our president, uh, coming against and binding this witchcraft that's trying to rise up, uh, just setting up a standard, uh, setting up a standard against us. And we already started fighting that situation last month. Mm -hmm. uh, we came up against something. We didn't understand what it was. Mm -hmm. And as we established the bulwark that would rise up against any of those things, there was a bulwark established that night. So we found out two weeks later that the witch hunt was on at that time. You know, as we're starting to do all this mm -hmm. uh, stuff to try to come against the principalities and well, there's a standard set. So we need to continue with that. And we'll link arms with our brothers and sisters for the region and for our nation uh, and for Israel to make sure that the Lord's kingdom um, is being released as he wants to do through us and his will and his way. Amen. 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 All right, let's speak the word together. Will you not, not revive us again? again? That your people may rejoice in you. Yes, Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Yes, Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, therefore I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Lord. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes, Lord. Ron, you want to come take the offering tonight? Ron, yeah. We were still clapping, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Glory.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of your blessings, Lord. Thank you for healing us, for delivering us, for prospering us. Thank you, Lord, for making us whole. In Jesus' name, Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. We love you tonight, Lord. We bless your name, the name that is above every name. Hallelujah, Jesus. In your name, we stand in faith and confidence, Lord, that everything that you have promised will come to pass. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for revelation. Thank you for outpouring. Thank you, Lord, for visions and dreams. Thank you, Lord, for the encouragement that you give by your Spirit for us to believe for greater things, to have greater expectations, Lord, for nothing is impossible with you. Amen. And therefore, nothing is impossible for us if we can believe. And for that, Lord, we give you all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless all of you. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, Mike and Peter and Suzanne for leading us tonight in worship. And thank all of you that shared and uh, been an encouragement to all of us. Praise the Lord. And we're just believing for great things for the body of Christ. Amen. And that, that's not just us, but that's the body. Amen. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. And uh, tonight I really hope to... To keep my word, last week I said, last Wednesday I said I'd be brief, and I lied. It's not the first time, <laughs> praise the Lord, but uh, I'm going to do my best to make it the last time, praise the Lord. But I do know it's Wednesday night, and I want to be respectful of your time and know that uh, you know, everybody has to get up and go to work and do things tomorrow, so I'll try to keep that in mind, but at the same time I want to be obedient <laughs> to the Lord, so give you what I got for tonight. Praise the Lord. And I, in doing that, I want to begin at Psalms chapter 50 and verse 15. Mike, I'm still working on that, uh, trying to tone down the number of scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike is going to get thrown into the fire here before long, and uh, he advised me to try to cut back on the number of scriptures. <laughs> Not to be ungodly, but just to help him out a little bit. Praise the Lord. So. I'm going to try to work with you, Mike. Uh, yeah, Psalms chapter 50, verse 15. <laughs> Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Yes. Praise God. So we call on him when we've got a problem, when we're confronted with issues and situations, and he'll deliver us, and he delivers us so that he can be glorified. Amen? Yes. And... Uh, so we get to help in glorifying God by crying out to him when we got issues. Never thought of it that way, maybe. Praise the Lord. Our weakness glorifies him. Amen? It's in our weakness that he is magnified, that he becomes everything that he can be. Praise the Lord. So with that, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, we'll just read verses 1 through 3. We just talked about some of this Sunday, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that particular thing, just, but just to set this up. This same issue that we just talked about here, when we have trouble, we cry out to God. God responds and delivers us, and he's glorified, right? So he says, now faith is a substance. Remember, we talked about this Sunday. Faith is the person of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And actually, that is not a, you know, we always talk about that being uh, a way to faith. But the truth is, is after the fact, that's showing what faith already is. Uh, that it is the substance of things hoped for. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. That's faith. She just reached out believing that if I can just touch him, I can be healed, right? So that's the, re that's the reality of what we're talking about here. So for by it, by what? By this substance or this, this person that we're hoping evidence of things not seen, by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen we're not made of things which do appear. Now, I think it's interesting, like, this, this is the one chapter where God really is patting people on the back. It's the one place where people get singled out and identified as being something that is uh, 
good, that God really enjoys, that God is really appreciative. Not that God doesn't love us all the time, but this is a time where he just singles them out. And the amazing thing is these are all screw-ups. You know, these people are all just like us. They, they've got all their issues. They've got weaknesses. They fail. They, their faith wavers. And yet, this is a kind of a picture of heaven where you don't see any of that. All you see is their faith. He doesn't point out, you know, like talking about Abraham and Sarah. Uh, Sarah laughed at the promise. Abraham questioned it, you know. None of that is spoken of. It's just by their faith, right? And it's true of all through uh, Hebrews 11 where it talks about all these different people. And I was just thinking that Jesus loves faith-filled risk for the glory of God. And, you know, it's one thing to talk about that. It's another thing when you have to do it, you know. Uh, I don't want, I'm not going to single anybody out, but you know, well, all of us have times where we have to just say, okay, now we, we, we talk about how much we trust God and we believe God and God's going to do this, God's going to do that. But it seems like eventually the rubber meets the road where you have to just, you got to step out. I mean, you got to take the risk. You have to, and that, that's what God's waiting for because that's what shows him mighty. That's what shows his glory, amen, reveals his glory. It's like, uh, it's like David, you know, when, when David uh, went up before Goliath, he wasn't, you know, I mean, he was, he was considered a jerk, really. His brothers talked to him that way, like he was just a kind of a nerd. You know, you just came here for the show, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But the truth is, just think of Goliath. He's this huge obstacle, this, this big, ugly, scary thing with a rock stuck in the middle of his forehead, praise the Lord, <laughs> and with his eyes rolled back. You know, it's, 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 it's gruesome. And it's awesome at the same time, what God can do if we just put our confidence in him. Amen? So before that battle, David was ridiculed, as I said, by his brothers. They, they were mocking him. And, you know, he, his, his dad had sent him there with bread and cheese. And he was basically catering his brothers at, the, at, the, at this battle or this imminent battle. And uh, they just kind of ridiculed him and made fun of him and, the thing was, all of the people in the army, including Saul, were afraid. They were scared. They weren't moving. They were just standing there. Day after day after day, this giant comes out and makes his boasts and threatens and intimidates. And they're all just there kind of freaking out about it. And uh, they were all afraid. And I want you know, why were they afraid? They were an army. Now, I know Goliath's a big guy, but he's just one guy. You know, I mean... They had an entire army there as well, but they were freaked. And it was because God was weightless. And I don't mean that he, that he was, you know, ethereal and, and floating and, and, and meaningless. I just mean that in their eyes, he had less authority than their circumstance did. The circumstance had all the weight. The circumstance was carrying all the, you know, we talk about the weight of God, the, the Shekinah glory, the weightiness of God. Well, God was like a feather to these people at that particular time. Goliath carried the weight. The, the Philistines were the weighty situation before him. And the thing is that weightlessness doesn't really tell us anything about God, but it tells us everything about ourselves, about our psychological disposition to exclude God from our reality, where we have to be mentally to just push God out of the picture of whatever it is we're dealing with, whatever we're confronted with. Look at, uh, let's look at this briefly here. 1 Samuel chapter 17, I want to read verses uh, 45 through 47, Mike. 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. We've been reading this, I'm sure all of us, since we were kids, if you went to Sunday school or Bible school or any of that when you were a kid, th these are the stories we heard more about than anything else, probably, because they're so, I don't know, they're so uh, storybook-like, you know. But then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield. But, I, but notice this, I come to you in the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. Now, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, 
and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Yes. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, yes. and he will give you into our hands. David had a word from God, right? And he came with that word. He came in the name of God. And we talked about it Sunday. The word was with God. The word was God. One of the way we identify God is the word. And so David comes with this word or with God, and he speaks to the, to the enemy, to the mountain, to the obstacle, to the thing that everybody was afraid of. But he didn't come with a sword. He didn't come with a spear. He came with a word from the Lord. Amen. He came with a belief that God's going to stand up for me because I'm going in his name. I'm doing this for the glory of God. Amen. So the thing is, you don't have to know a lot of things for you to uh, make a difference in life. You just need to know a few really important things. Praise God. Amen. And uh, you have to know maybe just one thing. And that one thing is one great, majestic, unchanging, obvious, simple, glorious, all-embracing Jesus, yes. the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. David said, I'm wiser than all my teachers. Praise the Lord. I thought that a few times, and then they flunked me. Praise God. <laughs> but I still thought I was smarter than them. I was just bored. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So, I mean, I'm just saying, that's why you don't have to be, you don't have to have the highest IQ. You don't have to be the brightest person in the world. You don't have to know everything about everything. There's a few things that if you know, you can be smarter than everybody else. Amen. You can you can accomplish more than those with the PhDs and the, all the other degrees. Amen. If you just know the things that are really important, that really make a difference in life. Amen. John, First uh, John, chapter three, verse two. First John, chapter three, and verse two. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So God created us and called us to make him look like what he really looks like. Praise the Lord. Now, the problem is we've ended up trying to make him look like us a lot of times. Right? I mean, that's what religion does. It dumbs him down. It makes, it makes try to create God. Like I think it was Mark Twain said, uh, God created man in his own image, and man has been trying to recreate God in his image ever since. Yeah. And that's, that's true in a lot of ways. <clears throat> but creating or, <clears throat> or revealing God, making God look like who he really is or what he really looks like, that's what it means to be created in the image of God. We were meant to image forth in the world what God is really like. Mm -hmm. Amen? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, please. The word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Just ask uh, Goliath. <laughs> Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. But there's another, another thing here. I'm not just trying to make the, the analogy back to, to uh, Goliath, but the word of God is quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what you find a lot of times is when the word of God comes, Sometimes it's piercing. Sometimes it's clear revelation. It's just overwhelming, and you got it right away. Amen? It just comes, and it just like knocks you off your feet. Other times, it's like a glimmer of light. It's like a, just a piece of guidance, yeah. and then another piece, yeah. and then another piece. As you step out in agreement with the little that he gives you, then he gives you a little more and a little bit more and a little bit more without ever seeing the whole picture. And then you look back at it and you go, oh, my God, that's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. you know, it's fascinating. I, I like it when he just gives the whole thing to you. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because uh, then you can just get to go, oh, wow, that was really awesome. Amen. But when it's little by little, you have to continuously trust for the yeah. next thing because yes. you're always looking 
through a glass darkly. You know what I'm saying? You, you can see, but it's just not, you know, you're, you know, we talk about it all the time, different ones that are up here opening service. And, you know, I, I, I can feel, you know, God's nudging us this way or God's saying this, but, but it's just, it, it's like you know it in your knower, but you can't actually get it out in a yeah. way that can verbalize what it is you're feeling, see? Mm -hmm. So it's there, and you know that he's giving me this, and he's giving me a little bit more. It's like, just like what Ron was talking about. You know, he gives it to you, and, and then he gives you a little more. And, he tr and I think it's a, a lot of times it's just God is saying, you know, how, how hungry are you really? I mean, you know what I'm saying? How, how much do you really want more revelation? How much more are you willing to risk for the next thing that I have to show you, that I really want to uh, reveal to you? Amen? So look at this. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 42 through 45. And that's also a way that we learn patience. Because God, he doesn't work on our time frame. You know, I mean, he's outside of time. So all this, you know, give it to me today really is irrelevant as far as the spirit is concerned. It's already done. Right? I mean, as far as he's concerned, it's already over anyway, so it's already finished. He's just expecting us to believe in that realm, to believe in that way until we see the manifestation. You can't do that unless you're trusting him to keep his word, right? To be faithful to whatever it is he promised, right? So anyway, Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now looked toward the sea, and he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot, and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Now, Elijah didn't begin on the top of Mount Carmel. He began by praying in the desert in agreement with a promise that God had given. You know, everybody likes the mountaintop. I mean, we all love it when it comes to pass, right? And we get excited. And I told you, get to going, you know, get, get moving because this flood's coming that I, taught, that I prophesied, right? I mean, it's happening, right? But he had a promise that could have been claimed by any other child of God. That's the amazing thing about it. We, we, we look at Elijah and we say, oh, man, what a man of God. The truth is, anybody in Israel could have done this. It just was Elijah that believed enough to do it. Amen? Because so, let me show you. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 through 17. So, you know, we need. that's what I mean by we, we need to get our eyes off of people because you could be the person as easily as anybody else, that God brings the next great revelation, the next breakthrough, the next whatever it is God's trying to do. There's no reason why you can't believe that it's you. If you've got the promise, you can find a promise in here. You've got as much right to claim it and to declare it as anybody else has. We usually have set back and let somebody in leadership or whatever do these things, and then, then, then we magnify them. Well, the fact is, if you just would stand up and do what they're doing, you'd be doing the same thing. In fact, probably more than a lot of them, right? So it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, my words, right, to love the Lord your God, serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. Now, we know there was all kinds of idolatry and junk going on. So he's, he's telling Elijah and anybody else that has an ear to hear or eye to see, that if you'll turn back to me, I'll give the rain will come, right? But then he goes on, and this is where Elijah begins his deal here. I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat in full. And take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and you turn away and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you if you turn away from me and start worshiping idols and so forth, which is exactly what Israel had done. Then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you and shut up the heaven that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord has given you. Elijah just knew what the scripture said, and he said, Lord, I'm reminding you of your word. When these people turn to Baal, 
and start worshiping idols and doing all this funky, weird stuff that they're doing, you said you'd stop the rain. I'm just reminding you of what you said. Yep. So stop the rain. Show them that you're there, that you're involved, that you're still keeping your word, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. So Elijah's prayer came from a knowledge of the word of God. Go. It's the only, actually, it's the only thing that really makes any sense Elijah's out in the middle of the desert in this dry and arid place when he's praying that prayer to, for the rain to stop or for, for there to be no rain for three years. I mean, he's already in the desert, so it's like, well, it really wasn't about him, was it? I mean, he was trying to make the point. God said, you start worshiping Baal and other idols, the rain's going to stop. And it did for three years and Plus, amen. He had the knowledge of God's word. He had a promise from God, and he prayed that God would simply do what his word had already said he would do. Now, that's just what we do. We, we have all these promises all throughout the Bible. That's all we're doing. We're not twisting God's arm. We're not making God do something he doesn't want to do. We're just reminding him, that's what you said, God. And I'm reminding you, to show yourself mighty so that your people will know and so that the unbeliever will know that you are a God who is faithful to his word. You and your word cannot be divided. Yes. Yes. Amen? So Elijah simply, unglamorously, lined his life up to conform to the known, revealed word of God. And from there, just watch, from there you follow his life to the spectacular. Amen? Amen? Out running a chariot because of the rain that was coming, right? Yep. Praise the Lord. And then he, you know, destroys the, the uh, prophets of Baal and the fire comes down to the altar and so on and so forth. Of course, then he gets mixed up with a woman. He's got problems there, but that's a whole other message. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay, so Hebrews 11, it's all about faith. The whole chapter is all about faith. People, it's God just saying, look, look what happens when people believe me. Look what happens when people get a word that I have said and then stand on it. Look what you can do. That's what it really is all about. It's look what you can do. Look, what, look how you can change lives. These people stopped the mouths, uh, you know, of lions. They, they, they brought people back from the dead. They did, I mean, on and on and on. He, he shows us all these outrageous supernatural things that people did. Now, we know they didn't do it. They believed God, and he did it. Right. Right. That's there for a reason, not just so we can go, wow, wasn't David something, you know, because we had the whole history of all of the other dysfunction of these people. Right. But as God's saying, look, you, normal, regular people, this is what I want to do if I can find somebody who will stand on what I have declared. Amen. His, his word comes down like rain. Amen. And it will not come. If it can find somebody, amen, to believe it, it won't go back to him void. Amen. Now, if his word comes down, everybody's just standing there going, wow, it's wet out today, isn't it? Mm. Nothing happens. Right. Right? It, nothing happens until somebody steps into the void. Come on. Amen. Then it goes back to God. It accomplishes the purpose that God sent it for. So all, what we're doing is assenting, really, to look at, look at Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? So all we're doing is just agreeing with God's own word. Amen? Praise the Lord. There's no inconsistency with God. None whatsoever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. No deviating at all from who he is. All right? Look at James chapter 1 and verse, uh, verses 17 through 19, Mike. James 1, 17 through 19. There you go. 
Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his, of his creatures. We talked about this before. Mary, when she gave birth, blessed is the fruit of your womb, right? Then Jesus tells us, unless you eat my flesh, drink my blood, amen, you can't be any part of me. You can't have any part of me, right? right. He is the fruit of of the new covenant that we eat to enter into the covenant with him. Amen? He is the fruit of Mary's womb, and we eat that fruit. Just like Adam ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, we go back to eating the fruit of righteousness. Praise the Lord. And it's the word of God. It's, it's living in that reality. So of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now that's a good scripture because uh, we, need to, we need to be quick to hear what God is saying, right? right? But we need to be slow in speaking because when you speak without thinking, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we engage the tongue with, before the mind is really ready for it, and we say crap that is just so ignorant. <laughs> and I'm not talking about swear words and, you know, anger. I'm saying we... We say negative things. We say that things that are contrary to the word of God that undermine our position, that it gives fuel to the enemy. It makes God sound like a liar, or it makes it look like we think he's a liar, right? Oh, my God, I don't know how this will ever work out, you know? Well, we go, I don't know, you know, the money's just not going to be there. You know, I've had this thing for six months, and the doctors can't find the problem, and blah, 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 blah. And so we're, we're, we're we need to be quick to hear what God says, but we need to be slow in the way that we speak what's going on in us, the way we're, yeah. the way we're you know, uh, dealing with this information, this revelation. We need to know what it is that God has spoken to us and think about it and then speak in agreement with God's word. Not just say the first thing that comes off the top of your head because who wants that? Right? right? I mean, we're looking for something a little deeper. <laughs> you know, and what's on the top of your, I, you don't want what's on the top of my head. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm just saying, we need, to, we need to be quick to hear from God. And then we need to be slow in the way we process that to speak it out into our situations and our circumstances. Amen. Amen. All right. Psalms 119, verse 89. Psalms 119 and verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Praise the Lord. And again, it goes back to the same scripture where he talks about his word comes down out of heaven like the rain and so on and so forth. So the word is settled there. It's a question of whether or not we are going to get it to be settled here on earth. And that's our responsibility. That's where faith comes in. That's where we believe that what God has said in the heavenlies, in the spirit realm, is the truth for us in this natural realm. We are spirit beings. We just happen to be living in a, in a, a, a natural uh, world. In the world, but not of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So it, to Jeremiah, God says, I will hasten my word to perform it. Amen? What's that, what's that mean? I will hasten my word to perform it. It means I'm going to use every bit of me, all of my force, all of my power, the word itself, to cause it to come to pass. Now, I'd say that's a pretty definite thing. If God says, I will hasten my word to perform it, I'd say we're, we, we're pretty sure it's going to get done. Right? It's going to happen. Amen? With God, things and words are synonymous. We say, well, words are invisible. Yes. But so is everything else until it gets spoken into existence. So they're the same thing to God. He, he's not words and, 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 and what we would say is our realities are one and the same thing. When he says it, it is. It's, it's, it exists. It, everything here wasn't here at some point. I mean, every, not just the building and, and the, you know, the, you know, the furniture, but everything. It was just molecules. It was just atoms. It was just stuff. No, no substance. I mean, not, not 
at hearing. Praise the Lord. The earth wasn't here. God spoke it, and it became a form where it had been formless. Everything is that way. Praise the Lord. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that what I say comes to pass. Because if I said it, it has to be. Because I can't lie. Amen. Amen. So words and things are synonymous. If God says it, it's a reality. We, we need to just dumb it down, simplify it, and look at it the same way. If he said it, it has to be. Amen. Just because I don't see it doesn't make it not real. Amen. Colossians 1, uh, verses 16 and 17. And if I believe it, it will manifest. It will be visible. <clears throat> Praise God. Yes. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So what God has said is more real than what you see. I know that's, I mean, it's hard for us because we're finite. We live in a linear world, and, and everything that we do is, uh, you know, timelines, and we, we see everything that way, and, and everything is, you know, show me and I'll believe it, you know. I'm from Missouri. The show me, you know, I mean, all this kind of stuff where we, we have to have something tangible to validate anything that anybody says right. But God's saying, everything that I say is a reality. And the truth is, everything that you see was invisible at some point. Mm -hmm. Even that which you see was made from the unseen by the word of God. Right. Everything was, that we're seeing was spoken into existence, into being, by the word. Now let me give you just an analogy. This is just, I'm going, to give, uh, give, I'm going to take a scripture that has nothing to do with this, because I can. And, uh, and you know, it's, prob it's not, you know, not the best way of doing hermeneutics, but I, I don't really care. I'm just going to do it because I, I like it. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 6, verses uh, 32 through 34. I just like playing little games with my own head, and then you're stuck with the, what, the residue. For if you, if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. Right? If you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also do the same thing. Right. And if you lend to them who you hope to receive from, what thanks have you? For sinners also lend to, lend to sinners to receive as much again. So what he's actually saying here, and this is the way I'm looking at it, is if you do this, what's so special about that? Right. Just my language, okay? Right. So if you love those that love you, what's so special about that? Right. If you lend to people that, that you know are going to pay you back, what's special about that? Mm -hmm. Right? If you do good to people that you know will do good to you, what's special about that? Right. Nothing, right? If you only believe what you see, what's so special about that? Right? I mean, that's just everybody. There's nothing special about somebody who just believes what he sees in front of him. What makes you supernatural, what makes you special in the eyes of God is that you believe what you don't see. We walk by faith, right? Genesis chapter 13, uh, verses 14 to 17. Genesis 13... Uh, verses 14 through 17. The Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Suzanne? From the east, from the west, the north, and the south, right? All the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. 
Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. So what's the application here? Abram was in a spot that totally defied the promise of God. There were Hittites, there were Le uh, Hivites, there were Jebusites, there were all the sites, all the ites were in the land, right? And he goes there and God says, it's all yours. Look everywhere you want to look. It belongs to you. Everywhere he looked was another ite. There was another inhabitant. There was somebody else on his property that God told him was his, right? So everything that Abraham saw defied the promise that God had given him. But God said, look up now. Look up now. I, in your place, where you're at, look up right now. With all of the contrary evidence, look up now. Beyond what you see to the word that God has spoken. Get up and walk in what God said, not in what you're looking at, not in what you see. Praise the Lord. That's the challenge for everybody. Because we're, we got the promises, have we not? I mean, we don't have a, there's an abundance of promises. There's plenty of promises. The problem is we're looking at all the reasons why the promises can't be. Instead of looking up now and claiming the promise and, and operating, stepping out. See, we, we make excuses, and they're good excuses. They're logical. They're rational. They make perfect sense to a human intellect. But I don't want to hear them. I don't want to hear them because I don't want your logic. I can, I can get logic. It doesn't take a genius to operate in logic because all you got to do is look around and see what, what are the odds that this is going to happen. Right. So then we start devising a plan, and then we get Ishmael's, and then we get all the other crap that we don't want because we thought, well, I don't know how God's going to do it, but i got a way I think I might be able to accomplish this. And we end up with a big mess right. when we should have just looked up started walking in what God had promised. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. So I think the word to us for 2017 is get up and start walking. Praise the Lord. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen and unto the glory of God by us. The promises don't mean anything to anybody unless us Step out and operate in faith in them. God gets no glory for making a promise. The glory is when he delivers us by the promise. Then he's glorified. That's what we read in Psalms uh, uh, 50 uh, verse 15. Right? How do we, we want to give glory to God. We want God to be glorified. The only way you can do it is this way. By us. If you only believe what you see, what's so special about that? You can choose. You know, all it takes is faith in God, faith in his word. They're one. They're one and the same. You can't say, I believe God, but I don't believe his word. You can't. Not with any kind of rationale. They're the same thing. His promises are yours. In Christ, all of them are yea, and in him, amen, by us. It's not complicated. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Last scripture here, we'll wrap it up. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are are eternal. So the health issue you've got, temporary. Healing, permanent, eternal. Financial issue you're going through, temporary. Prosperity, eternal. Right? Relationship, all jacked up, messed up, screwed up, temporary. He wants to restore all relationships, right? Yes, Lord. Eternally. Everything that we see is temporary. Mm -hmm. It's what we don't see that we want because it doesn't change. It can't change because it's God, his promises, his word, and he are one. He's the same. 
His word's the same. His promise is the same. Yesterday, today, forever. Amen? So look up now. Now. In the place that you are and walk in the power of what God has said. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whatever it is, the bigger the better. The bigger the more glory God gets. And that's why our dreams have to be huge. Look, we're in a perfect position. That's what I keep telling myself. You couldn't be in a better spot. There you go. You got to believe big. You got nothing else going on here. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not being facetious. I'm being honest. Yep. I got there's room. I can I can believe big. Why not? Well, I got nothing to lose. Right. One of the greatest assets we have as a small church is we're not stuck in some system. Right. I mean, God's told me that over and over. You ought to be grateful. You don't answer to, you don't answer to anybody but me. I don't have 50,000, you know. I've been there. I, I mean, I've been that where you have to answer to boards, and I've had to go and, and, and interview with the, with the district superintendent and with local uh, area leaders and so on and so forth because I preached something that wasn't in their handbook. I had to go explain why I did it. <laughs> Amen. Sally will tell you. I was... I, was, I spent more time on the road going between presbyters and the district superintendent than I did preaching because I just couldn't conform. I was, I was a troublemaker, praise the Lord. I loved God, but I didn't lie to him. I told him what I preached and why I preached it. And the truth is, at the end, when I was ready to resign and leave the organization, they told me, don't worry about it. Just don't make a big deal out of it. Just, you know. Don't preach it to other preachers. <laughs> I said, I can't. You know, I'm either going to do this or I'm not going to do this. Right. I'm not going to make myself a hypocrite to, satisfy, to keep the church in your, under your auspices, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, praise the Lord. That's another story. But I'm just saying, look, it, it, we've got it. We've got the ideal situation here. I know people come and they, they think it's awkward and, you know, the things we do is, you know, strange and so forth. Hey, listen, I've been in a lot of churches, and, and most of them are pretty strange. <laughs> I'm talking about denominations. They do all kinds of weird stuff that I just think, what? what is, why is that? I mean, why are we doing this? I just feel like there's a purpose to the craziness that we have. I mean, we actually think that we can get somewhere and accomplish something and touch God and be touched by God in the way that we do it. We're trying to make it like a... New Testament church to the best of our ability. We don't know exactly what that is, but we do know that they just met together. Everybody had an opportunity to, to share what God's trying to do in their life, what God's trying to do to them, brings people together, helps everybody to kind of understand. So it's not just one person telling you this is how it is, but you get a witness because we all have the same spirit, right? And so we get a witness in our spirit. Is it uncomfortable? Yes, it is. Sometimes it's uncomfortable for me. Sometimes I think, just stop. Let's stop here. Let's, let's stop with that one. Right? But I, I, I mean, I don't want to because the next one might be the one that I'm listening for, the one I'm needing to hear. I don't, you know, just because I didn't want to hear that one doesn't mean that the next one may not be mine. No, I'm saying I'm human, right? I'm human. So I understand when people come and they go, wow, what's this all about? And what the heck was that that they just said? Look, it's because they're, want, they're coming because they're wanting some uniform, you know, controlled thing, you know? This isn't Disneyland where you get in line to get on a particular ride. God determines the ride today, you know? We just want to be open to whatever that is, right? Whatever he, wherever he wants to take us, whatever he wants to do. So is it awkward? Of course it is, because we can't control it. But that's the very reason why it's so precious. There's no, there's no way you get a reward without some risk. You'll just get, keep getting the same stuff. You know, you'll just keep getting the same old thing and nothing really changes. Right. So if you're not willing to take a risk for God, you're not going to get to enjoy the glory, the experience of what God does. Amen. When we trust him. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Give him a hand tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Hallelujah. Have a great night and hope we'll see you back here Sunday. Stay warm. You bet, Ron.
Yeah. What you see out there is trying to distract you, but his target, all of God has targets. Amen. Praise God. You know, in the dark, he said, we're in, in the last days, there'll be darkness, gross darkness in the land. Well, it's getting pretty dark, praise the Lord. I mean, if you're watching the world, amen. But he said, that's the point. That's the time when the church, when the body of Christ will shine brighter than ever before. Amen. The thing that's cool about light is they, light and darkness can't exist in the same place. Right? right? Wherever light is, you can't go out. I saw somebody talking about this here a while back. You can't go out. It's dark out here right now. If you go out where there's no light, no street lights, if you went out to where I live, there are no street lights out there. So unless you turn your yard light on, it's pitch black. You can't go out there and get a bucket full of light or dark and bring it back in the house and say, look how dark it is in here. Because it's not dark anymore. Right? right? It doesn't work that way. You can take a light out and go wherever you want to in the dark. But you can't bring darkness and put out the light. Yep. Praise the Lord. So Amen. I'm not worried about the darkness. I mean, I, I'm concerned like any other normal human being is. You've got kids, you've got grandkids, you've got a world out here. It's crazy. It's insane. But the darkness doesn't bother me. I got the light. Amen. Amen. I ain't afraid of the dark. Praise God. Sorry Amen. about my English. I'm not afraid of the light, of the dark, because the light exists in me. Wherever I am, it's light. Praise the Lord. Amen. The darkness cannot come over me. Amen. Praise God. And it can't over you or any other believer. Amen. That's, that's the beauty of what we have in Christ. He is the light. And the darkness will not prevail. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen.